thank God I'm happy to be here to bless you all and uh, as you experience the Holy Spirit, it's very important to understand uh, to experience the Holy Spirit is like being touched by the presence of God, that His presence comes strong. So that's a great blessing. It's not something that happens every day unless we have a very close relationship with the Lord. And my goal is to help you all to have that close relationship with God. That you, uh, because then you'll be blessed in every way. So the experience of the Holy Spirit is something, it's a great blessing. That blessings will, can keep coming to your life if you follow God's way after you experience the Holy Spirit. Because experiencing the Holy Spirit is like entering the holy place. It's like God coming to you and touch your heart. But let me tell you, the infilling will not stay strong. So you're not filled with the Holy Spirit at this point. You're not filled with the Holy Spirit. You're just touched by the Holy Spirit. What is the difference? It's just the Holy Spirit comes on you strong, strongly. And, but we are like a leaking cup. Our heart is like a leaking cup. The Holy Spirit is like water that is that it comes into the, the uh, leaking cup and it will keep leaking. You find that, notice that when you experience the Holy Spirit, suddenly you experience a great love or release of burden, but then after a short time, that strong presence will leave, but not totally. It's going down slowly. When you leave this place today, it will go down further. Tomorrow, it will go down further. But how do you keep it? It's by loving God and obeying God every day. So I hope you all have this mentality. You all have this mentality that uh, if God comes to me so strong, I want to continue to have that relationship with God and continue to be used by God the whole lifetime. God knows your heart. God knows who wants to be used by God. God knows who has the heart of God. Um, so many people experience the Holy Spirit one time and after that no more or just experience very lightly and, and don't have the strong anointing of God and when the strong anointing of God comes He will bless us in every area of our life in our spiritual life, in our ministry, in our daily life, in our family life, in everything so I hope you treasure that and really in your heart say God is so good like in 1998 when I experienced the the love of God flowed into me like electricity. I said, oh, this is great. I want to keep the relationship with God. I want to follow God. I want to have that continual relationship. And I want to carry the power of God like the evangelist to pray for me to have that strong power that comes upon me. I want to have that close relationship. I want to be used by God. So that was my intention. That was my strong intention. Um, and I hope you have that intention too. So, now how do you keep that strong anointing upon you? How do you keep this continual blessing upon you? First, you have this close relationship all the time. All the time, loving God. God, you're so good. You love me so much. And I can experience you like this. And I can carry the anointing of God to bless people. And I hope you believe this. In this conference, just in a few days, so many people have been blessed. And Imagine, I keep going to different places and bless different people, different countries, and you can do the same. My point is, you can do the same. God can come to us so powerfully, we can bless many, many people. So that's very important for us to believe that we can be used by God greatly after you experience the Holy Spirit, but you have to keep that relationship. First, by loving God more, uh, have a time of concentrated prayer every day. That you concentrate in loving God, and enjoying God every day. Say, so, Lord, you're loving me, you're so wonderful, you are so good to me, you're blessing me, you are with me now. So every time you experience the peace, when you pray, when you experience the peace, you thank God, have a heart of appreciation, strong appreciation. God doesn't have to bless us like that. God doesn't have to bless us like that. But God chooses to come to bless us all the time. So you say, God is so good. In my heart, I have a strong appreciation of God. Do you have that? A strong appreciation. Now some people just say, thank God. Thank you. Thank you. 
not a strong appreciation. <laughs> Think of this. If you were about to be hit by a car, and someone just snatch you and pull you away from the car, would you really appreciate that person? And Jesus took us from hell and gave us eternal life and helped us to experience His strong presence. You say, wow, God, you're so good. I hope you have that heart. I have this heart all the time. Now, you experience the Holy Spirit very powerfully just now. It's very special. Not everyone experiences it like that. How in your heart would you have a strong feeling of appreciation of God? All the time, not just for one moment. All the time, in my heart, I have great excitement because of God. I have great excitement because of God. Now, Dorcas, just now, did you experience a strong presence of God too? Would, would it excite you to say, wow, God was so good, I want to enjoy the relationship. So I hope we all have this strong appreciation. In my heart, I always have this strong appreciation. Whenever I think of God, I say, oh God, you're so good. I love you, I like you. Now this strong appreciation is very key to your whole life. How can your whole life be blessed by God? When you have this strong appreciation of God. Is it hard to have this strong appreciation, very strong appreciation of God? I, everywhere I go, wherever, whatever I see, I always think of God. God, you're so good. God, you're blessing the people. You're so good. So in my heart, there's strong emotional response to God, but not a negative emotion, but positive emotion of excitement, of love and joy and, and relaxation and enjoying life, that kind of mentality. And that is very key to our whole life being blessed by God. When we say, who am I? I don't deserve anything. I don't deserve any blessing. I don't deserve the blessings of God. God coming to me so powerfully. I don't deserve that. And you come so powerfully. I want to really appreciate you. So I hope you have this heart of appreciation. And that motivates us to continue to love God. And then we need to have, read the Bible. I really believe that what the Bible says is true. Because when you experience the Holy Spirit, then you know God can come so powerfully and He can continue to come to bless us. When I experience the Holy Spirit, suddenly the Bible becomes very real to me much more real than before. Because now, I know that what the Bible promises, that God can pour, the Holy Spirit can pour the love of God into your heart, is so true. And all the blessings of God will be true. So when I read the Bible, I take it very seriously. So my whole life changes. And that's why when I teach, I have this zeal and excitement, the enthusiasm, because I see that God is very real. All the promises in the Bible is very real. And then I put it in action. So you can every day spend time praying to God from your heart, from your spirit. Hallelujah! Praise you, Lord! Hallelujah! <laughs> from your heart. Oh! Now, I purposely uh, want, uh, invite you to do that. The reason is that when you flow out from your heart, or let the Holy Spirit flow into your heart, Gradually, you can experience the joy of the Lord. Gradually, this joy can flow out. Uh, and then you can carry a strong anointing of God. So this way of prayer, appreciation of God, then you can carry a strong anointing of God. And then when you pray for people, you pour out your spirit to God. Oh, you don't have to think of a lot of things. So that's why I invite you in your prayer, don't use complicated prayer of the mind. Prayer from the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. Thank you for your love. I love you. I love you. I need you. I want you. It's simple prayer from the Spirit. And that way you can experience God much easily. And then you can have a strong anointing of God and then you can pray for people. And then if they are non Christian, you can uh, talk with them and listen to them, to listen to their needs. And then you can say, I know you suffering, you have problems, and you have needs, and God wants to come to bless you. 
and uh, I have experienced something similar or someone has experienced something similar and we have experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, the blessing of God and would you like me to pray for you? So it basically it's listen to them, responding to the needs and then inviting them to lay hands on them. So you have to practice with Christians first and then you go out to pray for your friends, your family, your uh, relatives and whoever you meet, even on the street. And if they're willing, you pray for them and they might experience the peace of God or the release, relief of burdens. Now this is what happened to most people. Burdens go away and peace is a comfort to the body. These three things happen to people most. And then the next is the comfort of the heart, the healing of the heart. So these are from the Bible. Peace, John 14, 27. Peace I give to you, Jesus said. Peace I give to you. And then Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. All you who are weary and burdened, come to me and I'll give you rest. That Jesus will take away burdens. So burdens go away and peace. And then uh, uh, the comfort of the body. Psalm 16 verse 9. Psalm 16 verse 9. That uh, my, my heart is glad, my tongue rejoices, and my body rests secure. My body rests secure. The body feels comfort. Many people feel comfort to the body. So you tell them that this came from the, uh, the Holy Spirit. God blessing you. If God bless you so in such a real way, do you want God to continue to bless you? If God can come to bless you uh, so real, do you want Him to bless your whole life? And then, if He's willing, then you explain the gospel to them. And, uh, and lead them to pray, to lead them to Jesus. And if you do this, continue to do this to your friends, relatives, and people you meet, God will be very pleased with you and He will bless your whole life. Now some people say, I want to break through in my life. I want to break through in my, in my family. I want to break through in my ministry. And they just try their own way. The best way is to have this appreciation of God, to love God and have a close relationship with God and be willing to bless other people, willing to bring the gospel to people. These are things God please, is pleased with us. Some people say, I want to find this job. I want to find this way of earning money. I want to uh, do different things. Now, these are man's way. We want to have God's way. And then God will bless us. If you do evangelism and pray for people. And also, we want to raise up the spiritual life of Christians. If you come across a Christian, you know, wherever I go, when I come across the Christians, I won't say, well, he's a Christian, I don't need to help him. I won't say that. Even a pastor, when I come across a pastor or any Christian, like in a hotel, we lived in Nakuru, I talk with the person at the counter and encourage her, her spiritual life. Wherever we go, we can, you know, the, the driver for our van, I've been talking to him and praying for him, and he experienced the Holy Spirit. So wherever we go, we can encourage people, and when they're Christians, we can tell them. After we pray for them, you experience the Holy Spirit and you can experience the Holy Spirit stronger. And then you can go and pray for people and you can bring people to Jesus and you can raise up the spiritual life of people. And when you do that, God is very pleased with you and God will bless your whole life. And your whole life will be very fulfilled. Now, my motivation to serve God is not just God's blessing, but I tell you because many people are motivated more by blessing what comes to you. I'm motivated more by the fact that I see so many people suffer. So many people don't have Jesus. And so many Christians are so weak. So I feel my heart, I have a strong love for them. That God has put His heart in me. I hope you will have this, the heart of God implanted in your heart. So that your heart is like God's heart. When you see people, you want to bless them. When I bless people, I don't think of, when I bless Him, God will bless me. I don't think that way. But I encourage you like that. Because many people first look at the blessings of God. I encourage you that when you have a heart of God, when you have a close relationship with God, always appreciate Him and read the Bible and believe the Bible and bless people, God will bless you. That will motivate many people. And you can use that to motivate people too. Right? Motivate people to believe in Jesus too. Jesus can bless your whole life when you follow Him. But gradually you grow and then gradually your heart is not on how much blessing you get from God. Because God will bless you no matter what. Your heart will be like the heart of God. When I see people, I want to bless them. 
I want to help them. I want to do things for God's glory. And then God will be very pleased with you. And He will raise you up to a high level. That you'll be used by God greatly. You'll be able to bless many people. So I hope you have this mentality. I hope you have this mentality to go into a higher level of the relationship with God. After today, it can start powerfully like that. The day when I, in 1998, when I experienced the Holy Spirit, started a new way of, of my life. And then after that, my uh, ability to bless people has increased tens of thousands of times. Why do I say tens of thousands of times? Because in the past, it's very hard for me to raise up Christians, to really love God and serve the Lord. But now I can raise up many, many Christians. And I can bless many Christians, many people, not many non-Christians. And I can bless tens of thousands. I pray for tens of thousands of people and raise up the spiritual life. And I can continue to do that. You know, every meeting I can have so many people blessed, so you can do the same thing. Now when I say this, I'm not saying I am good. I'm saying I am nothing. But God blessed me when I was weak and raised me up to a high level. Do you hunger for this kind of life? Or do you just want, I want money, I want blessings, I want help. Or do you want to say, I want to go a higher level. Now, when you go a high level in the Holy Spirit, there is no limit on how much you can do for God. There is no limit. There are some people that I know, they can actually go to heaven. When they pray, Jesus will take them to heaven. And they see the mysteries of God. And they see the plan of God. And that can happen to you too. So I hope that you would uh, have this heart and say, Lord, if I just look for my things to be helped, look for my help, you won't go very far. People will always say, I have problem with my family, I have problem with my life, I'm unhappy, I'm depressed, I need help, please pray for me. People look, just look for their own help. They won't go very far. But when you say, God will take care of me, why do I have to worry about all this thing? And you, you keep going, then you can do great things for God. Let me ask you, is your heart on? Now sometimes we could be on our ministry, but we look at ministry as our business. Some people say, I have a ministry. I want it to grow big. That's not the right mentality. The right mentality is, God, I'm here. Use me whatever way you want me to use me. You want to send me to do something that I've not been doing? Fine. When you send me, I'll do it. When you want me to stop this ministry? Fine. Tell me what to do. When you want me to stay on this ministry, fine, I will follow it. So it's not our ministry, it's very important. It's not the way I want things to be done. I want to follow God's way because God's way is the best way and the most strategic way. God has a strategic way of using your life. Your life can be used quickly. Now when you hear this, does your heart respond? Does your heart have these thoughts in you and say, Lord, I want to be used by you. Or does your heart just say, that's too hard, that's too far away, I cannot reach there, not me, I am nobody. Or do you say, Lord, I'm nobody, I'm weak, but you can use me. The point is, God can raise up weak people. Actually, God uses weak people all the time. When you're willing, His power will come upon you. Or you say, my family has too many problems. No problem. God will help you overcome the problem. You just learn not to be affected by people who always hurt people. If someone in your family always say negative words, don't take those words seriously. Or anyone around say negative things to you, don't take those seriously. Those are words of a sinner or words of Satan. But people hold on to those words and say, He hurts me. He hurts me. Don't think about those things. Those are from Satan. When Satan talks to you, you don't have to take, you don't have to pay attention to it. But pay attention to God's word. But most many people, they pay attention to what the husband says to them, the negative words the husband says to them. And they remember that all the time, my husband doesn't love me, my husband doesn't want me, and and feel bad all the time. Those words we don't have to take seriously. If your husband is not nice to you, or your wife is not nice to you. You don't have to take those seriously, but you want to choose to bless him or her and forgive him or her and have compassion on 
him or her because he has problem. That's why he hurts me. Then you won't be affected by them. Then you will be. Uh, we have to turn off negative words. That's very important. How to be used by God. Turn off negative words. But you love them. You love the people. But turn off negative words. If there are people who say things negatively to you, turn it off. If there are people who are uh, very hard to work together, you have to turn off their problematic ways. But you love them and bless them. And then you, your life will be raised up by God. Let me ask you, which of you really want to be used by God? Which of you? Are you willing to pay the price to be used by God? It's very important that your heart is in God. Then your life will go higher and higher, no limit. But if your heart is saying, I want to do my things, God doesn't like that. God doesn't like us to go away, even if it's ministry. Some people could be insisting, this is my ministry. I have to do well. They just want their own glory. They just want to do their thing. But if they follow God, have God's heart. Some people do ministry with the heart of saying, I want a ministry to be big. I want a ministry to produce money, produce income. So I have more income. So I have a bigger team. That way we are thinking ourselves. We have to think of God. God has a way. I want to follow God's way. His way, when I follow His way, everything will turn out very beautiful. What I'm sharing with you is from my heart. My heart is always to raise up people to serve God. My heart is not just to bless people. I bless people. But after I bless them, I want to raise them up. Because if I just bless them, pray for them, and they are blessed, and they stop there, not much good. Just get you know, comforted, healed, or the joy of the Lord for one day. The next day they forget about it. It's not going to do much good. But if the person is blessed and then say, God blesses me in such a way, I want to follow God wholeheartedly. That's what I encourage you to do. But when you do follow that way, it's a narrow way. It's a narrow way of a narrow way. Now the world is a wide way. Jesus, when you believe in Jesus, is a narrow way. But when you follow God totally, it's a narrow way of the narrow way. That you're really putting down yourself. That you're really obeying God in everything. I'm calling you to follow this narrow way of the narrow way. When you follow that way, God will be pleased with you. And God has a special plan written in heaven for you. And God will make sure that you can walk on that way. When you trust in Him, have a good relationship with Him and obey Him. And say, trust in Him. Say it together. Trust in Him. Have a good relationship with God. Obey God. In every way. In every way. Then your life will go higher and higher. And then He will bless everything in your life. He will provide for your needs. He will give you the money you need. He will give you, He will improve your family. But the family problem could be a way to test you and also to, uh, I would say, to train you, more to train you, to, so that you learn to say no to sinners' words. When sinners say negative words, that you can turn it off. So when you hear me, do you want to respond and say, Lord, I really want to follow this narrow way of the narrow way. Do you really want to follow that? And do you believe that you can go higher and higher? Or do you think you're always a nobody, doing a little thing? Do you believe that you can go higher and higher? So I hope that you follow God that way. And it takes every moment of our life. It's not just in church and you say, yes, I dedicate my life to God. It's every moment in your life, from morning to nighttime, every day like that. Lord, this uh, time right here is for you. Please guide me what to do. Tell me what to do. So every moment, uh, submit to God and have a close relationship with God. Everywhere you go, say, Lord, you're so good. Hallelujah, I enjoy you. I enjoy you. I really appreciate you. And when you do that, then you're strengthened all the time. And this prayer of grace I have taught is very important to always declare God's grace and blessings. God, you're loving me now. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for 
be in front of me and behind me and pray for me, lay your hand on me. Thank you for remembering me. Thank you that your love can never be separated from me. Thank you for caring for me and, and uh, have a wonderful plan in the heaven for me. Every day you declare that. That way you believe that you are being loved by God and you are very special in the sight of God. We are all very special in the sight of God. But many people do not live out the wonderful plan, just live out so little of God's plan. So I hope when you hear these words, you know, you hear this come out for me all the time. I encourage you to go on the narrow way, narrow way of the narrow way, to be used by God greatly, to be lifted up by God. And because what I look for is people who are willing to be used by God totally. The heart is totally the heart of God. The heart is totally the will of God. That's most important. Does anyone want to respond when you hear this? I hope one thing you have to overcome is fear. When you experience hope, the Holy Spirit stirring you, your heart right now, you can share and say out and say, this is what God is speaking to me and this is how I will respond. And does, does anyone want to say anything responding to what I just said? Now, some of you may say it's too difficult. You can tell me the difficult. But if you say, Lord, I really want to walk on your way, on the strategic way of God, a very important strategy is very important. For instance, in uh, the war of the world, and people just throw bombs anywhere, it's not going to do any good. But if they throw the bombs in the target area, you know, where the enemies are, then it will be effective. Now for Christians, pe people could be doing a lot of things very busy, but not really on target. And God has the target for us. God has a strategy for us. If we follow God all the time, He will guide you in the strategy. And my strategy is to raise up the ones who are willing to go on the narrow way of the narrow way. Why? If I raise up one person here in this church, this one person will make a bigger difference than 1,000 people. If you are willing to follow the perfect will of God, your life, will be greatly blessed by God and your life will go higher and higher. But some people just want their ways and worry about things they will never go far. That's why my ministry is mainly to raise some people to go on the narrow way of the narrow way, to go on the strategy of God. So does anyone here want to share anything and say, God is really stirring my heart, I really want to walk that way. That will encourage the other people here too. And don't think that you cannot do it. Anyone here want to respond to God like that? I tell you, that is the greatest gift you can give God or to me when I see people who are willing to really go on this narrow way. I'm most uh, comforted, most encouraged. Although I will keep going no matter how many people will really follow this narrow way of the narrow way. Does anyone want to share anything responding to that? Feel free. That's freedom. Freedom. Courage to share. That's very important. That's the first step. If you want to serve God, you have to have courage. You have to have no fear. Put down the fear and say, it doesn't matter what people think of me. It doesn't matter. What matters is how I can be used by God. God will take care of me. I have no worry. Okay? I hope in your heart you have some responses. I hope. I hope in your heart. Just say, Lord, I submit to you. What I want to really encourage you to have the courage to share what God is doing. Anyone else want to share what God is stirring in your heart to encourage other people? Yes. This morning I've been impressed. And I've seen salvation is similar from whatever you are. Can that you speak louder I've so seen, that they can hear you too? I've seen salvation is similar. Just staying within God uh -huh. every time and every moment of my life. Oh, I've declared in my heart that I will just follow that narrow of the narrow way. Uh -huh. And I will keep within God in my 
life. And I've seen the way you have explained it is more simple. Just saying uh, there is a word you have, you have uh, said. You should not use those complicated words in our mind, but just simple. Just Lord, I love you. But just simple when you allow God in your heart. So I've declared in my sight. I will follow. Thank God.